five. Told you he was in his own lane. Now he's moving full speed. The young homie just arrived in the building. Look at Give him. it up for Kitty K. Yeah. Hi, ladies. How y'all doing? <laughs> Yo, who's the crew walking in? Yo, look at the homie right here, man. Ain't coming too crazy today. Yeah, what's up with you, family? Come we got on, a... Came with Entourage. I brought the city, like, man. Like this is an HBO series or something It's so going cold on. out here, I had to bring L.A. with me. You had to bring L.A. <laughs> with you? Yeah, man. How you Oof. been, man? I've been good, man. Yeah? I've been chilling. You know, I'm having fun. Yeah. Album's out. Album's you know? out, man. Full <laughs> speed. I've already tuned in to it. Man, man. appreciate it. Yeah, I've been having some fun. That's the whole thing. The whole album I've been telling people was... I've been having fun. They be like, what's different with this album and the last one? It's just fun. Just fun, man. And less pressure. Uh, there's songs on there that I can hear the fun. You know what I like to do? I like to listen to music and then and then live vicariously through through the artists. Right. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I, 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 I can't do necessarily what you do <laughs> anymore. And then, you know, and you know, you got this song with R. Kelly, Dolo. Kells, man. Big yeah, homie. Man, and you know, and, and I was thinking, damn, Kid Ink and Art Kelly, you know, how did that happen and why does it happen? And then you think about Art yeah. Kelly, and I was like, the comparison is Art Kelly is the, you know, supreme songwriter. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Art Kelly is known for pinning like crazy hooks. Yeah. Panty you know, dropping hooks. Uh, panty dropping hooks. <laughs> you know, and uh, did y'all work in the studio together or was it like. Nah, who? I mean, this so. Me and Kels tried to put something together on the first album. Yeah. But a lot of people don't know because I never, you know what I'm saying, talked about it too much. And the record never surfaced anywhere because it just never got finished to the right side on the production end of things more than his side of things. So when the second turn came around, I feel like, you know, I, I run into R. Kelly's people a lot, like just his team. And it's mm -hmm. like other people, you know what I'm saying, I know from them. So they reached out again, like, yo, you back working on the album, we already know, you know what I'm saying, we got the same, you know what I'm saying, circle. So anything you got for Kells and I was like actually I do yeah because like, a lot of times sometimes I'll think about it and they'll ask me if I have records for people and I'll be like nah I don't have anything for that person because it's not like I'm just chasing features more so then I'll have songs where I'm like this fits this person they could do this so when they reached out for the Kale situation I was like yeah I got a crazy record I did it was low-key already pretty much finished it yeah. just had like an open verse and I wanted somebody to re-sing the hook so I had this whole record and I think that's what helps me get featured so much is because the record's done, so yeah, they're already hearing a finished song that really, you know what I'm saying, they feel like, oh, I don't need to be on this, but I'll be a part of it because it's, you know what I'm saying, simple work instead of having to get in the studio and rewrite and do something brand new. So with the Kel situation, I just sent them the record, man, and got that response back. Mm -hmm. the crazy thing about it is when I first got the demo back, when you're not able to sit down with people and be in the studio with them, they don't understand where you're coming from when it's somebody from the label or somebody else telling them a song that they don't even get. So I had to go back in and be like, yo, Kale's kind of missed a couple parts. Uh -huh. And I might need him to come back in on this part and add some melodies and then do some harmonies and this yeah. and that. But I'm like, I'm not going to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> somebody <laughs> else going to tell him. Uh -huh. I'm, you know what I'm saying? So I telephoned that all the way through and he actually got back in the studio and recut the yeah, record, which is dope, because you ain't got to do that for me. I'm just little kidding, man. That's R. Kelly, man. That's R. Exactly. Kelly. Has there ever been a, a artist you, you gave a record to and, and they turned it down? <clears throat> um, Sometimes. Actually, with the R. Kelly record, I tried to put a couple people on the song with him. Yeah. And when I tried to like play the record, like, yo, I got this record with R. Kelly. What you think about going in and duetting and doing something with him? But like everybody got intimidated. When they heard R. Kelly on the record and they were like, ah, man, I don't know. I'd rather do something brand new. I don't know if I can, you know what I'm saying, match up or whatever. And I'm just like, y'all crazy. This is going to be well, record. You know, <laughs> well, we, R. Kelly exposed people because he gave mm. birth right, right. to the yeah. majority of R&B right. singers that you hear today. Right. And they don't want to be exposed. Mm -hmm. True, true. The funny okay. thing is, I didn't think about that, too. I actually read the, some of the dudes I reached out to were all from Chicago, too. So they probably were mm -hmm. like, nah, They don't want to stunt with their like, daddy. Yeah. <laughs> true, true. I didn't think about that. Oh, yeah. I've never heard you say the word daddy, Tracy. I like got a it. ring to it. I'll daddy. say it again. Daddy. daddy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you said that to Kitty? <laughs> Anyways, yo, I was thinking about you, actually, once I found out that you were coming, because, you know, if your profile is shooting to the top, it's only... <laughs> Yeah, it's only a matter of time before, like, I think a, a celebrity chick or a celebutante is going to be in your arms. And there is a story about ah. mm -hmm, Rihanna 
uh, reportedly. Hey, Kid Ink? Nah, not oh, okay, yet. Okay, okay. I will put that into universe <laughs> if you want me to. But nah. there's a story that she, uh, in order for Leonardo DiCaprio, who's her rumored boyfriend, to continue right. like going in and out of her, that he needs to lose some weight. He's got some extra skin uh, around his stomach region. You know, he, Leo kind of let 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 it go a little bit. You know, he was getting good money, <laughs> good Wolf of Wall Street money. Know, nah. uh, but the reason I think I'm, that's crazy though. The thing yeah. is, see, so I have a girlfriend. But think about my girl is she always wants me to be fatter. Hmm. She's always feeding me like I like when you look fat, your chubby face. I'm just like nah, I'm getting pudgy. Nah, I think it's cute. Like no, yeah, it's it makes not the cute. hugs better. It does some extra well, thickness. Is it better cuddle work? Exactly. Like that. Oh well, it's, it's cool not though. better when I gotta go on stage and take my shirt off, <laughs> and then all the fans is is playing me on comments. Like, look, he been eating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. He been in the studio a lot. So yeah. what's a date like with you? Since you have a girlfriend, how do you impress? Oh, her? a date is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I impress her by saying whatever you want. Now you can have it. And I think for me, I, I always kill Valentine's Day. Oh, it's always, coming. Yeah, I'm in Dubai this year. It's always a, a, a nice promoter out there who's like, yo, where are you going to go this Valentine's? <laughs> Been, I got booked Paris before. Mm -hmm. Valentine's. We're doing Dubai this year. I feel wow. like I did Hawaii. So I usually... So wait, you know what you it's good trips for your girl for Valentine's Day? Since he's giving you some suggestions. We're not going to Dubai, I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm working that weekend. <laughs> We're doing my one shot, the competition. We'll be in Chicago that weekend. Damn. All right. Uh, <laughs> but she gets to eat great meals every night. Um, great meal, home-cooked meals. Hey, let me ask you this. I remember when I was younger, and they used to use the term, uh, will you go with me when you asked the girl to be uh, your woman. How did right. you ask her to be your woman? What did you say? I think it, yeah, I, I was never that guy. I honestly was the guy who could never like ask out. Yeah. It was. It always had to just be like a moment where you just knew what was going on. And that's kind of the same thing. I think you know. I known her since high school, but we never really got involved like that until afterwards. So it was just a you know just knowing, being on the same vibe yeah. kind of situation to where I didn't have to like break out of no friend zone and nothing like that. To where it was like. Nice. Excuse me, would you like to go out with me? Mm -hmm. It was kind of like, nah, I swear this was on vibrate. Is that it was kind of like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's texting you. <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, there we go. So, uh, nah, but yeah, I, I couldn't do the, the ask out yeah. thing. You I just was one like day a shy guy growing up. Introduce yeah. her as your girlfriend. You know, she's got to be like, yes, she's my shoddy right here. Okay. Like, okay. He's nah. <laughs> laid back guy, man. It seemed like you, uh, you, you know, you fun to hang out with. Um, sure. I want to talk about the album. I want to open up the phone lines, 888-74-223-345. And I want to do a lyrical breakdown with you with one of your songs. I'll Ooh. explain that up next. All right, here's the one with Dave's Loaf. It's called Be Real. Be Real. That's Be Real right there off the Full Speed album with Ken Inky's here. Ooh. In the building. Dave's Loaf, man. She She's a rising star. Yep. Yeah, man. And I think, you know, she kind of like show and prove to me because a lot of new artists, you never know when you send them a record. How it's gonna be when you get when you get it back because yeah. you know when they do their own songs when they have one hit sometimes they're not really knowledgeable themselves that they even made that song or they want to be on that level mm. so you get yeah. the next song and it sounds completely different like nah that's you don't sound like the same person but she actually like I didn't get in the studio with her because I didn't want to make her nervous sometimes I get in the studio with people and they be like oh I gotta show and prove or I gotta do this or they want to keep asking me questions where I'm like be you go in the booth and do you I'm gonna figure it out later like I'm you know what I'm saying piece it up so I yeah. sent her the record and she came back and sent it with just her own style on it is there sure. anybody on the album that you did go in the studio mm. with yeah I went in the studio with Chris so uh, me and CB got in the studio okay with the uh, hotel record yeah the hotel record me and CB got in the studio uh, Migos you know every yep. city we uh -huh. go we got in the studio what else was on the? Uh, let me see. Let me let me check. Go see what's on the studio. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Uh, Trey songs. Trey, we were in the studio, but I was talking to Trey like every day while he was putting this record together because we had to keep going just back and forth on making it perfect. I think um, Brick Baby Shitcher and Young Thug. I mean, we've been in the studio a lot of times. So Usher. you know what I'm saying. Usher, we weren't at the studio, but Usher's been showing a lot of love. Mm -hmm. He's been coming through like just listening parties, and then at the video, he showed a lot of just respect and everything for. Being the artist that he is and at that status. Now, Brick Baby is here. Yeah, um, Brick Baby is in the just building. Just say hi, man. Get on, just, you know, this will be your debut on Sway in the Morning, man. Just say what up, bro. Yeah, you, gotta, you gotta come <laughs> through and say what's up on the, on the mic. 
What it do is Brick Baby <laughs> Man in the building. You already know Bad like Gang that representing. Okay. West Coast representing. You know, okay. West Coast representing. Slauson's okay. finest. Slauson. Man, Brick I used to baby. go to the swap meet on Slauson. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. man. The, uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Who was it that... Uh, who was it that meet on Slauson? Uh, J-Rock. I thought J-Rock, I think I met on... Uh, on, on Over in that. used to be around because he yeah. used to kick it with Nippolite when we used to, yeah. when, we was, when everybody was coming up, J-Rock. Yeah, J-Rock. I used to meet him on the corner rapping on yeah. Slauson. Yeah. Um, now, one thing interesting, you changed your name a couple of times, right? Yeah, I changed my name to make it, like, more radio-friendly because stuff started picking up for me. I used to go by Shitty Montana. Shitty Montana, nah! okay. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> <Nobody>. <laughs> Shitty. Well, let's, let's analyze that. Uh, see, like, Shitty Montana. Yeah. I can, see, look, I can, we need the, the story behind that. The brand new record by Shitty Montana. <laughs> they wasn't going. Yeah, yeah okay. You know what, what else? Then what else? Like, and I went by MPA Shitro. You know, MPA goes by. Is you know, shit your favorite curse word? Nah, in the hood, they call me shitty because I got a, a real messed up attitude. <laughs> what? You, know what you got a Since shitty attitude. Young, stuff from my hood. They yeah. just be like, the, you know, that shitty. That was, that's the name they gave me <laughs> when I was young. What's the most fucked up thing you've done? I mean, we on the radio. Well. <laughs> oh, I don't want to incriminate nobody. Right. So, you know what I'm <laughs> the most fucked up thing I did was, uh, like, go to jail. Yeah. Okay. okay, fair right. enough. Right. But you out. Hey, yeah, do you mind if I still call you shitty from time to time? I like oh, it. I still, I still call you. Okay, all right, yeah, cool. Regular, right. Baby, yo, <laughs> yeah. he's the shit. Shut up. Literally. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, okay, cool. We gonna uh, we got a. Uh, That's funny. Yeah, hold on. Let me go. <laughs> <laughs> he's funny. Yeah, man. Shitty, shitty Montana. Man. Nobody told you. Uh, <laughs> That name might not work, huh? Yeah, now he's on the uh, he's on the record with Young Thug featuring like a hot boy. He's actually the person that helped, you know what I'm saying? Because he be in the A so uh -huh. much that uh -huh. he helped put just the Migos situation and the Young Thug situation right. together because he's been running with those dudes just in the streets in the A for a cool minute. So it's like all regular that he introduced me to them in the studio when they didn't know. Well, they were still rocking with me, but then, you know what I'm saying? It's not, you can't just go to the A and just yeah. walk in the studio and think everybody going to respect you. It's definitely like a introduction type situation yeah. you really got to mm -hmm. go down there and hit the streets so so shit he kind of got you initiated yeah man definitely <laughs> <laughs> he, he put me he ju they jumped me in over there in the a and the nah. you should you, you should keep the name shitty man i think it might be. <laughs> you won't forget it all right good morning how you doing say hello to kid Inc. hey uh can y'all hear me it's yeah me. yeah go ahead hey uh first and foremost so great job every morning love the show kid Inc., what's good man what's going on bro man i had a quick question for you so yeah. I saw you did a video with Steve O'Coy yeah. on YouTube, and and you and you was with uh, Microsoft and Gutex and whatnot. And like as a gamer, I thought that was such a good look. I thought that was really cool, and you ended up giving money to your charity. Yeah. So my question is, like, are you planning on doing something else like that in the future? Because I thought that was pretty dope, honestly. Definitely, man. I think I've been in a lot of talks, especially with just you know the people around me and just my team about getting into more charity stuff and getting out in the streets more and giving back I, I was real mad when i was on tour and i was on instagram watching people have all these charity sports events and do all these things and i was getting yeah. invitations and i'm like dang man they probably don't think i you know what i'm saying rock or do anything like that mm -hmm. to where i was just on skid row the other day with no promo just passing out food i went and bought That's like awesome thousand dollars worth of food from ralph's and just gave it out to everybody in bags and clothes and all kind of stuff because you know it is what it is, and it's the city, you know what I'm saying? I got to give back. I know where I came from. I started doing music because it was a dude who set up his own after-school program that had production equipment and microphones, and he taught us how to use all that stuff mm. on his own charity. Like, this all his stuff he put into it. So me and Nipsey came from, you know what I'm saying, that, and I kind of understand that whole system and still, you know what I'm saying, believe in giving back for sure. That's what's up, man. Mm. Kenny can see the album was Ooh. full speed. Uh, before I, I before I play like a hot boy, man, I wanted to yeah. see. You wonder, come here, man. Um, Kid Ink, you know he's he's been up here. He's done the Five Fingers. He's freestyled <laughs> the whole nine. But listening to you talk about how you put together an album, um, I find that to be like where the real talent lies. To the person who has the ability to write hooks, mm -hmm. right. you know what I mean. And I kind of wanted to challenge you. This, is, if you don't want to do it, you can say it on the spot in front Boom! of a million. Nah, all, all good. Right, all right, um, <laughs> You know, we call this show Sway in the Morning. You know, have the B, Tracy G. You know, we talk to the world on a daily basis, not just one right. market, not just 15 markets, but the entire world. 
you know, we give a lot of people opportunities. You know, mm-hmm. we broke a lot of artists, broke a lot of songs. And I was hoping, you wonder, can you throw a beat on? Like, I, I, I wanted you to hear this beat. And I was wondering maybe if, you know, while we play your next song, you can listen to this beat and maybe write a quick hook about the show. Is that all right? All right. You can try something. Okay. All right. So that's going to be the beat. And then we're gonna play it. We're gonna play like a hot boy, featuring Shitty and Young Thug. All right, here it is. Sway in the morning. Sway in the morning. Shade four five. Yeah, yeah. Kid Ink is here, man. Now this is something yeah. I've only asked a few people to do this in my career. True. Because not everybody can handle it. True. You know what I mean? I'm, I've asked Kid Ink to write a hook on the spot. First time we ever did that. Yeah, yeah. Was with Nas on the Wake Up Show with King Tech and myself. Um, and this was in the 90s. Yeah. And no Nas pressure. took one yeah. song and, and then he wrote a whole chorus for us. And then we had Jay Z do it. No pressure. Mm. This was on the wake up <laughs> show in the 90s. In the and 90s. And then he was able to do that too. And then we had, uh, just get who, who else? Oh, Shaggy did it. Was it Shaggy that came up here and did it? <laughs> Shaggy, Shaggy, did it. Shaggy did it. Um, you got the Shaggy promo? I don't want to throw him off. Oh, no, I'm good. Okay, I'm good. okay. I you think got, I got the Shaggy mine. promo? <laughs> And then Seven Streeter did it. Yeah. Okay. She killed it. Yeah, yeah. You I'm know, like, and Roscoe da- Miguel did it. M- Miguel did it. Oh, I know Miguel went off. Yeah. Roscoe Dash did it. He did. Dope. Right. All right. Forget <laughs> the Shaggy thing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Take it too long, damn though. Shaggy. God damn it. All right. <laughs> so DJ Wonder is gonna throw in this beat. Shaggy. And, and, and Kidding <laughs> just wrote a hook in three minutes. Mm. Sway yeah, in the morning, yeah, shade yeah. four or five. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoop, whoop. Let's see what we get. Let me get one more round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One time. It's kidding. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, yeah. It's real West Coast. <laughs> I like that. One, one. I'm with Sway in the morning. Everything on fleek on me said it's never gonna be boring. Now, when you with the Oakland OG, everything on fleek. Wake up like fall. Oh, oh, just wake up like four. Just wake you up like four. Oh, oh. So that's the, all right. So go. I love it. Uh, so I got, all right, all right I got this one. So I got the words right here. So, so we're going to run it back one time. Whoop, whoop. So go like this. Here. One, one, one. I'm with Sway in the morning. Yeah. Everything on fleek on me ain't never going to be boring. Nah. When you with the Oakland OG, wake you up like four. Just wake you up like four. Oh, oh, just wake you up like four. Just we wake you up like four. Oh, oh, just. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> it's amazing what inspiration comes from. He just asked for coffee. Right, right. Oh, exactly. That was all the play. She was like, "Is hey, you want some coffee? Yeah. While I'm waiting, it's hungry. Okay, okay. Wake you up like four. But yo, honestly, that's why I, I tell people like. I like like this muted TV is yeah. my life. Like I, I honestly watch TV muted more with the like words uh-huh. than anything because I feel like the words I'm always looking at the words and you'll see words like I wasn't even thinking about that word and then come up with some or you'll see an action happening and you'll start making up the story yourself like that looked like this happened and then it'll turn into a situation off the record. That's crazy mm-hmm. that you said that because I heard that's how Busta Rhymes did the video for Put Your Hands Where My Eyes Could See. The video, the music was playing and Coming to America was on. Right. And they were doing that scene with the dance and the wedding. And he was like, oh shit, that's my video. Yeah, like, I, w- I watched the entire Natural Born Killers movie for the first time on mute and was amazed in the studio. Like, this is the best movie ever. I don't even know what they're talking about. <laughs> it, but it inspired like mm-hmm. different things. I wrote a song about it. And, like it's just a bunch of stuff just comes to mind. Dope. Wow. Kid Ink is here, man. The album huh? is full speed. You're going to be doing a tour too, right? Yeah, man. We're doing the Scream Nation tour. So it's like the reintroduction of the Scream tour back in the day, which I feel like now just thinking about my show, thinking about having Dej Loaf on it and her fan base right now, and then thinking about Ray Sherman and how they perform. I think this show is going to be way more like turned up and a little bit more hip hop than the last Scream tours where I feel like it was a little bit more pop driven you know yeah. it started with the B2K and mm-hmm. the Bow Wow side of things to where I feel like this show is gonna have way less kids under 15 than the other shows used to you know but did you need to holler at like Omarion or Bow Wow to get permission <laughs> to use that nah, name? Nah I, I didn't I don't know what Scream went through you know what I'm saying but Bow Wow is the homie Omarion's the homie I haven't talked to him since the whole tour and everything went down but I definitely want to reach out and see you know what I'm saying the experience and, and mm-hmm. see what they're about and 
how to get in that show. Because I remember going to one of the shows back in the day. I took my little brother to see Bow Wow, and I think Omarion was doing it. And it was dope. Like, it's a definitely the stage production. Everything is, like, not an average show. They really put a lot of money into it. So I'm excited to really give the ideas and, you know, turn up the show. Wow, man. Kid Ink is here. I, I, huh? I, I, I think I'm going to come to the Screen Nation tour, man. Yeah, yeah, man. I, we're hitting uh, we definitely hitting Brooklyn out here. I don't okay. know the exact date right now. Somebody in the in the building knows. I'm, I'm gonna wait till you go to a softer city though. Yeah, I well, don't want to <laughs> turned up, man. I, I can't do that, man. That's loud. I was gonna dangerous. be turned up. All right, look, we do this thing called lyrical breakdown, and I pick a song off the album. I want you to break down the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. And this song is called "Round Here." All right, so I decipher songs. But I'm a lyric guy. I like to, you know, find meaning. I'm the dude who looks at a picture and comes up with a thousand versions of what that picture yeah. means. <laughs> and if I if I get stuck i kind of want to find out who the painter is and what did they mean when they painted it yeah, yeah. this song is called round here round here so i'm gonna go through the lyrics if i if i if i if i, if I get it wrong please correct me <laughs> all good all right i'm gonna go with verse one niggas round here call me debo take a nigga girl she reporting like i'm a p.o mm. <laughs> Go ahead, break these. You, 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 you. So, <laughs> round here, niggas call me Debo. Taking a good girl, she reporting like I'm P.O. So, it's like Debo for me, when I say the Debo record in this song, the whole thing is really about just taking stuff. It don't have to necessarily be like no bully, no. I mean, well, it's bully work, but it doesn't have to be like when you watch the, the Friday movie, like it's not like over the top, it has to be gangsters. So I'm taking chains and you know what I'm saying? Okay. Dough. Not a to thief. where, right, right. I'm not, <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. I'm not robbing you. But I'm definitely bullying the situation as far as the tables, the party, the female situation, the the show, the check. Like, I'm I'm just trying to, you know what I'm saying, get in front of that, you know. So with that, that's how the Debo started. And, you know, take a girl, she reporting like I'm P.O. I, you know, I got a lot of friends that got to report to P.O.'s. And I, I never had, I'm, I, you know what I'm saying, I'm glad I don't have to. I, I have too much that I have to partake into. I couldn't give that up. So, you know, I got, she reporting like a P.O. P.O., okay. A okay. parole officer for you guys who don't know what a P.O. P.O. is. is. There it is. Yes. Okay. Uh, and your girl mm -hmm. is reporting like a P.O. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your girl yeah, reports okay, like, straight to the table like a parole officer. Like, your, I'm her parole officer. So mm. she's showing up like, I'm okay. here for the check-in. Does your girl get <laughs> mad at lyrics like that or she understands it's just a song? Um, I mean, she understands it's a song, but at the end of the day, it's it's a reality. It's not like when the girl's reporting like a P.O., I'm like, so then I took it down and da, da, da. it's like, that's really what's happening. Even sometimes I'll say in records like, I'm smoking with your girlfriend. I'm smoking with my girlfriend too, but your girlfriend here and you not here. So it's like, it's still, it's still <laughs> reality of the situation. So Rule for that one. to be the case. It's a dirty game, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> Turn it from the six, put the one before the zero. I ain't nothing when I'm done. You know, I cancel like Nino. Oh, so what's it, what's it? oh okay. So I said, uh, <laughs> I take, I said, take her from a six, put the one before the zero. zero. So mm -hmm. I was saying, turn her into a dime. You know what I'm saying? So take a girl oh, from, 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 a, from a six, ah, put the one high. before okay. zero. Exactly. Okay. It's a little upgrade. Like like so take her from a six, put the one, one before the, the zero. zero. It ain't That's nothing sweet. when I'm done. You know, I cancel like Nino. So it's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not taking your girl. It's cool. After the club's over, after everyone gets my pictures and my table look popping, you have it back. You know, the Nino cancel line, I feel like it's been used a couple of times, but I've never really gotten to it like that. So I got that off. But that was from the movie. Uh, cancel that that's bitch. From, that's New from Jack New Jack, Jack City. City. You New got canceled that bitch. Okay. Nah, but, uh, that, was, you know. that was such a harsh line. <laughs> it was. And she was such a beautiful woman. I had her on the show, too, and we talked Ooh. about that. Yeah. Ooh. Dime a dozen, dime a dozen. What okay. kind of joke is that when people come to see you and be like, cancel that bitch? Yeah, she didn't Shut like up. it. She didn't like it. I was saying it too. Um, <laughs> hoes ain't loyal, but they freeload. <laughs> That's so yeah. true. You ain't even got to explain that. Uh, I remember when you used to give it up for Frito. Mm. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Again, so like the girls, you know what I'm saying? This is the table situation. They freeload. They not loyal. They over here. You know what I'm saying? Free loading up on these bottles and everything. <laughs> and so ain't it obvious though? Like you go to the club and you can tell the girls that's just kind of lurking yeah. to get the free oh, alcohol. Oh, it's lurking. I've seen them. They dance slow, get up to the table, move, and it be one leg. Then you get one more <laughs> leg. And then you be like, yo, girl, you know that you bumping into me. But it happens, you know what I'm saying? They spill over. It's always spillage. Yeah. But it's not always just females. It'll be that one dude who will stand right in front of the table, but like right there the whole night. He ain't drinking nothing or nothing. 
but I've had dudes actually try to sneak. I've had females take the bottles too. Uh-uh. What yeah. happens after that? Man. You never have to kick anyone out till I'm show? Yeah, I've taken the bottle straight from you. Like, give me that back. Put that. All right, all right. Give me that bottle. So what was the uh, the next line I said, though? It was the... uh, You wanted free, though. She give it up for free. I remember (laughs) we used to give it up for free, though. There's so many girls that act different that you, in high school, I know you. Yeah. Remember? That's not (laughs) fair. (laughs) High school. But you can't put none on me now. Like... I known you, you know me, so now it's different because you know what I'm saying we adults. I got to be a different guy. Yeah, nah, nah it's because you're nah, getting money, you though. Look free. at your chain. But even not just me, it's like I know too many of the homies that you gave it up to for free, and you over here acting like you know now you, you got to pay for it. You got to trick for it. It's when it's over the top, like you know what I'm saying. It's not like regular trick for. It. I'm saying I'm only saying that to girls who is like, are you kidding me? Like I only rock with dudes who did it. Like girl, do you know I know your track like yeah, yeah, five yeah. of your baby daddy <laughs> yeah. what girl I, that's so true man I, you know this <laughs> is some real see you never know where the inspiration from the lyrics come from let me continue <laughs> <laughs> spillage <laughs> we getting it <laughs> something that your man lack he can't hold your hand but he can't buy you no he can't okay. hold your hand but he can't buy you no handbag right <laughs> and that goes it's all still in the play with just that that mentality it's like that girl's there, her boyfriend not there. She, you know what I'm saying? She might be with him on Instagram and they holding hands and they kissy yeah. face, but not when it's club time. <laughs> not when it's after party time and, and it's, or it's handbag time. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely uh, with, when a rich nigga wants you. That's what it is, the That's quote. It, That's where it all come from. Handbag. And it's just the reality of it. It's not something I support necessarily. I laugh at it, but I think it's just funny. You know what I'm all saying? All right. You're getting the insight. See, what's interesting about this <laughs> Because, you know, Trey, you know, uh, Chris, you know, Migos, you know, um, all these different folks, including Kid Inc. This lifestyle is happening. This Mm. is actually happening around him. So if you want an inside view of what goes on (laughs) in the VIP session, a section, this is what's really going on. Cuff your chick. You better tuck your chain. I'm Debo and every day is Friday. Said I'm going to get you high, girl. Oh, going to slow it down. Just rolled up. Took one hit, you get knocked I the fuck out. Let me see. I got to yeah, <laughs> yeah, I had the flow memorized. I fucked up, man. I was a cup, yo, chick, chick, you better man. tuck yo, your chain. chain. Round here, I'm deep, and every day is Friday. Round here, yeah. said, I'm going to get you high, girl. Going to slow it down. Just rolled up, took one hit, you got knocked the fuck out. So that end part was all a play on the Chris Rock. I mean, the Chris Tucker, Uh, you got knocked the fuck out. Yeah. So, But it's when you, you took one hit of my blunt. And that's how I felt like that's how you felt. So it's one hit of the blunt is a knockout. And I kind of played that words with the Chris Tucker. Like, you got knocked the fuck out. So that's how I kind of I feel when I pass people my blunt. I'm like, you good? Yeah, you knocked out. And then what was the line before that? It was the uh, I'm Debo and every day is Friday. So that that whole thing, too, is, you know, that was a play on the movie, too, with the Debo tuck your chain situation. But I feel like that's, you know, what I came up in in L.A. It was always like I've had different chains and stuff since high school but it was always you know certain areas you go to and you're like i'm not gonna floss over here too much yeah. you know what i'm saying i don't really know nobody over here i'm not gonna be on that because it's not even that you necessarily are afraid you know sometimes you just don't want to feel disrespectful yeah. Yeah. when you got your chain on you're like why do i'll be in my house with my friends i'll be like man i don't need to keep showing like i, I see you keep looking at my chain yeah, it's not you, because you want it it's just listen, man you know? in the hood chain is like fresh steak mm. that you wear oh. around your neck mm. around hungry hyenas. Yeah, hyenas you know you don't want to put the steak <laughs> in a hyena's face unless yeah. you want them to take look you have never seen me in jewelry <laughs> have you ever noticed that and i've been yeah. working for 20 years yeah i know you could grab you a nice one of these Man, I'm good. I'm good. i live in the heart of harlem and i'm from oakland where i'm gonna wear that jewelry mm. right right exactly <laughs> you know I'm a, that's cool yeah i don't i don't show off like that when yeah. i get out man. all right man thank you for doing that lyrical breakdown yeah so, man we yeah, you know um you talk about those blunts you know you're from la yes you know, i'm from oakland but y'all used to have do sherm sticks Woo. So, yeah, that's it what I've never, that? I've never got caught up. I've had friends who, you know, what I'm saying, been in and out. I've had friends who got caught up, and what you know, what I'm saying, true? got slipped. 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He probably got some funniest stories. He's told me some funny hey, Sherm shitty. stories. Shitty. Yeah, yo, yo. Oh, shitty. <laughs> He's told me a couple funny uh, Sherm stories I before. I what Sherm is, man. Here, here, let, <laughs> you got to tell him. Well, Sherm <laughs> is um, a liquid <laughs> fluid. They say it got embalming fluid, yeah. but it's PCP, and it makes you hallucinate, right? Yeah. And they dip it in the blunt. They dip their cigarette in the Sherm. In the Sherm. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, or they're blunt in the shower. Yeah, um, and you smoke it. You smoke it. It overheats your body. Yeah, your brain starts going crazy. Huh? Uh -huh. So like in like all the cold regions too. Just don't put it off in California because yeah. people in DC yeah. that's just waterheads. Too. That's water. They, they call it waterheads. Water ah. They call it water on the streets. Uh, we go LA. get a bit, not a but, little bit. Uh, <laughs> Sherm stick. Sherm is the reason why the murder rate was high in the night. Yeah. It was charm because you get it people was charm. First you, you spaz out. You spaz out like if you don't if you don't know how to like control drugs, you spaz all the way out. Yeah, and there's people like doing life over charm, like over charm. Like, yeah. It's terrible. Yeah, no, man. man. <laughs> Welcome to LA. All right, charm is like. It's it's terrible. It's worse, I, than, bath salt. right, it's worse huh? than bath salts, probably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Kid Ink, man, congratulations. <laughs> this dude has sold over four point five million accumulatively. Uh, Ooh, sold congratulations! My five million appreciate it. Uh, albums and singles together, man. Yeah. Uh, you've had a lot of success, and you did it your way. You know, in man. your own lane, so to speak. Working. Uh, working full speed. You you hear what I'm doing yeah. with it, right? Um, and uh, congratulations, man. Thank yeah. you, man. Appreciate you, you guys here, always. Man. Nah, man, it's family work up here, man. Work up. Okay, uh, and it's always something different, man. Stay different. Stay, in, you know, you, you're you always positive about it. You got know you, man. I mean? Humble. And, uh, Humble and, and hungry. And so. I can appreciate that. Get the album full speed. Oops, I'm, I'm, go I'm grab that. Have out now. It. Full speed. Go grab it's, it's, it's some signed copies going around somewhere. It's the ones that come with the, uh, if you ordered, you pre ordered the DTLR, Ocean oh, 15, yeah. Timberlands, you got a signed copy. I've been seeing those on Instagram. I just signed a bunch more last night that are going out too. So, you know, we're having fun. I'm trying to make it really interactive with the fans and get them to go get those hard copies and those posters and appreciate the, the CD and have that forever. You did so Seth Myers last night, right? Seth Myers, yes, man. Amazing. That, I haven't done too many you know what i'm saying tv spots like that so when i get a chance it's really a different experience yeah. than doing tours like i did 200 dates 220 220 dates last year wow of shows where you know to go in and do this is a whole different experience and you know it's more fun to than yeah. you know what i'm saying being exhausted from doing tours and all that there it is kid ink man on seth Ooh. myers jimmy fallon's next man uh but first it was mtv all right was mtv hey, was sweet that's right rap fix, rap fix okay. freestyle